that, folks. Thank you. I, uh, maybe that will form as a kind of therapy because for a mentalist, me, let alone for a sleight of hand artist, I end up by uh, having a Band-Aid on my hand and reading a newspaper. So uh, it, may, it may influence my sleight of hand work shortly. As a matter of fact, my friend Bill Luxon is now in the audience for one of the most skillful parts of the program, <laughs> finding a subject with a ping pong ball. We've had you toss ping pong balls. Every time we do it, we bet that he's going to miss the first time it's going to hit the aisle. So, Bill, I do need someone for an effect involving playing cards, and I'd just like you, Bill, to toss it over your shoulder, please. We'll see who it lands by and catches it. Bill? <laughs> <laughs> come here, Bill. Come on up. <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> oh. What a trick. 115 ping pong balls. <laughs> that while we told him nothing about it. And what a cascade of balls that was. That's the third, second dirty trick you played. <laughs> the last time with Jane Withers. You remember the phone? Ringing while you were yeah, talking on the top of the show. Bill, how about taking one of the balls? Did anybody we'll catch any? <laughs> Take one. Right. And if you oh. will, Bill, we will try again. I hate to tell you what they're going to throw this time, Bill. <laughs> no, no. Whoever catches the ball, someone catch it, please. Uh, the gentleman, uh, who, anyone who grabs it. Gentleman right down there. Would you stand, please? Come forward, if you will. Step on down. You're casually ready to go, my friend. I'm going hiking in a little while, too. Come on up on stage. <laughs> Step over to my right here, please. You can watch. <laughs> What's your name? Brian McCusker. We don't know each other, do we? No. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'm only joking if I did. Brian, I'm going to use a deck of playing cards, uh, aside from 52 ping pong balls. It is a complete deck of cards, Brian. I think this is pretty obvious, and we've t just taken the jokers out of the deck. Brian, instead of selecting a card, all I want you to do is to pick one by opening the deck and looking at the card. You see what I mean? Don't riffle through like that because there may be some thought reading and you'd see too many cards. You just open it, note one card. The camera won't show. Just take the deck with your hand, please, and open the deck. Since you have one clear in your mind? All right, Brian, this skull, if we can show this on camera, I'm going to ask you to hold the deck and perhaps mix it for the moment. This skull is rather small. <laughs> Some of my staff recognize it as one of my relatives, but uh, that is kind of joking. So if I can take the deck from you, Brian, stand up, just take one step forward, if you will, and hold this between your right thumb and first finger. It's just a tiny miniature skull. Take your left hand and brace your right hand with it like that so you can hold it towards our camera continuously. Now, Brian, to be very honest, we've taken the jokers out. To be very honest with you, I want to use card. Did you take the... You did not look at the Queen of Hearts, did you? No. All right, we can use that. Did you look at the Nine of Clubs? No. Good, I want to, I want to get four cards. Six of Hearts? No. One more will do it. I want to get four cards that you did not look at, and the Eight of Spades you uh, did not look at. All right, here's what we will do. As a matter of fact, folks, I think you're going to find this kind of intriguing. If I can take these cards, we'll do it one of the cameras here. We have Six of Hearts the Eight of Spades, the Queen of Hearts, and the Nine of Clubs. And Brian, I'm going to sandwich these cards inside the skull, thusly. Just about like that. Now hold your hand a little bit higher, as steady as you can, and try not to wiggle your hand because its jaws are not that solid. Now, Brian, we have here 48 cards. I'm going to ask you, sir, to think of your card. Incidentally, it's not a stacked deck because he didn't draw the card out of the deck. Just think of it, if you will. The reason I look down is to see how much time I have from time to time, my friends. Uh, I wish when I'm having difficulty in a test, I cannot always... I must be honest with you people. I don't think I get the card. And yet, let me ask you this, Brian. Would your card be a diamond, yes or no? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a diamond. Would it be the four of diamonds? Yes, it is. Four of diamonds is the card you had in mind. You will agree that that card is neither on top of the deck, nor is it on the bottom of the deck. Pinch that chain tightly. You could have thought of any card. He's holding the end strongly. Watch. There you are, ladies and gentlemen, the very card you thought of. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, sir. And folks, 
When we return, we'll deal a little while with an old and constant dream. Thank you. Blind. Wow, folks. about dreams. God, she's got that envelope precariously held in their hand. A few programs ago, I guess, uh, I don't know how many, how long ago it was, I gave you an envelope and you had mentioned in the audience that you dream fair, fairly vividly. That's right. You do re you dream in color? No. You don't? <laughs> no. I don't know whether I, I could never find out. Well, I, we must be honest about this and that is uh, we wanted to invite Barbara back when there was some significance in her dream pattern. So my staff has been in touch with her and she's been describing mm -hmm various dreams and then before the program I also spoke to her so that we could reconstruct it. but no one told you what to dream definitely not. we we did not tell you to to dream of a certain thing or suggest it you just kept notes on what you did dream yes, now I gave you this envelope and let's hold up so the camera can see I don't want to handle it no, you've never opened it have no, you I you don't know up to the light <laughs> but you you never you held it up to the light you read through <laughs> things <couldn't> see <laughs> and you you do not know the contents of it you've no. given it to no one no one else has handled it in no, any way shape or form and let me ask you before you check the envelope because when dr krippner explained a test like this and this is not a clinical test we did it more or less as an interesting experiment he would have people relate every specific incident in their dreams a lot of details and find out if they incorporated in their dream what someone was concentrating upon, a subject that was a sender. Tell me a little bit about uh, your dream content the past uh, few weeks. Uh, I know you made some notes to, on it. Yes, yeah. I did. You yeah. want to take it out? Go ahead. That's all right. I just don't want to... Just very, very quickly, what are some of the things you dreamt about? Uh, a football game. A um, football game. One person three times. Would that have anything to do with the game? Without yes, mentioning any names? Did. Yes, it did. In other words, three times in a row, uh, could you just give a first name? Uh, Dick. Dick. And what else did you dream about? Uh, one night, I couldn't remember the dream, but I woke up thinking number three. I didn't number know three. what three referred to, but number three. And anything else? Uh... <laughs> I gather the most recurrent thing than what was the, was the football game yes, situation. Yes. How many nights did you have that in a row? Three. Would you, all right, would you tear open the envelope, please? Hold it up to the light so you're not tearing through anything. And just tear it up on camera. There's a couple of messages. In fact, I'm going to ask you to pull them out. Once you break them open, and be very careful. Good, you got two oh, things. Hold on to the small one in one hand, the small slip in one hand. Open the large one first of all, please. Read out loud what it says, Barbara, first of all. To my dream subject, the subject matter of a dream I've enclosed will be successful only if you experience the dream at least three times. Now, no one told you we were looking for three times in the dream. No. At least three times. You dreamt about a gentleman, his name was Dick, and it had to do with a football game. Would you open that also, please? You've kept this in your possession throughout this period. Yes, I have. Read it slowly out loud. Whoever my subject will be, I shall attempt to enter into his or her dreams. A theme in which a ball and the name Dick or Richard will repeat itself. <laughs> Isn't that wild? expressing dreams we'll stress again no one told you what to think about or how many times Definitely. Barbara you've been a fantastic subject really Thank you so much. I want to uh, mention now because our program is moving <laughs> so rapidly that in order to really do justice to a remarkable woman I'm going to introduce her briefly and with loving care and yet she is one of the strangest persons I have ever met in my life her name is Dame Sybil Leak They are so enthusiastic. You look fantastic. Sit down, Dave. You civil? May I call you civil? Yeah, but how come you could introduce me as strange? <laughs> I mean, in, a, in a loving way, I, I love your writings. Well, hold I, my hand. All right, if we get any vibration, I think he's going to re read Ooh. me shortly. <laughs> you know, I, I know many, many times there's been maybe the unnecessary kind of humor related to one area because you're known as a medium, mm -hmm. you're known as a psychic, an astrologer, mm -hmm. and also, Sybil, and I, and I have to express what's on the mind of our viewers, also as a witch, and yet for you, it isn't a joke, and it's not an act, and it's not an evil thing, is it? No, it certainly isn't, and you're very clever. 
Thank you, thank you, Sybil. But at the same time... You're uh, a foxy old thing. <laughs> am I in getting... Well, let me ask you, what, no, what is witchcraft? For me, it's religion. And nothing Dating to Dating back with. to the Druid period? Yes, I'm a Druid. And uh, it goes well back to the time when men were just thinking there must be something greater than themselves. Even then, in this concept, yes, there was a feeling of a greater be. power. There has to be something greater than us. And I'm not anti-religious. I think I'm anti-hypocrisy. I agree with you. I think if you're a Roman Catholic, be a very good Roman Catholic. If you're a Protestant, be a very good Ro uh, Protestant. And I think if you're a witch, be a good witch. And I think if you're the Church of Satan, change. Ah, <laughs> then, then Sybil, witchcraft, do I gather, and because it's been distorted, is not dealing with Satanism? Because no. Because we're told this, we're no. implied this by certain so-called leaders. This has been leaders. bad publicity in the Middle Ages. And, um, of course, a terrible concept that has come through because witchcraft was taken underground. Yes. And when anything becomes secret and goes underground, a mystique is built up about it. And legend is added to it and added to it. And the things that we don't understand or don't even take the trouble to understand are the things we're afraid of. That's very true. We usually give, add a certain mysticism yeah. and an occult which is hidden to mm -hmm. them. When we come back, uh, I'd like Sybil to really tell us She's a legend in her own life, and she has met legendary figures. She's written a book called My Life in Astrology. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Sybil, I found your book, and I've read uh, three of how many books you've written? Um, 39 I've had published. I've written more, but 39 have made it. 39 books. It's an interesting uh, uh, title, My Life in Astrology. And I, I'm kind of questioning regarding astrology. I've got to mention to you, I read somewhere, you know, there's such interest in the underworld characters and, and things like the Mafia, and you noticed something about signs and oh, Mafia. Yes. What is this? Well, you know, the, the, quite a lot of the Mafia leaders have been born with the sun in Leo. And those who haven't quite made it have been sun in Pisces, born in March. I do, I do a tremendous amount of astrological research. I take blocks of 500 horoscopes of different types, mm -hmm. uh, like people who have arthritis, people who are known to be leaders in the mafia. Come to think of it, the FBI might be interested in me, might they? Oh, forget it. They no, just no, no, we pieces of paper. No, no, no. And uh, it's very interesting to follow. I'm, I'm purely dedicated to research in astrology. Well, you're I love it. You're a prolific writer. Now, you are also a medium. Mm-hmm. And I, can, I have seen film of Sybil Leake taken into a setting where there were supposedly, or many believed to be, other poltergeists or restless ghosts. How did you start in this? Was this part of your whole background? Well, I always accepted that um, reincarnation as a fact. You do believe in that reincarnation. That the spirit is indestructible. And, of course, I teamed up with various parapsychologists and... I was their guinea pig for years. I didn't earn any money from it. I was like, purely a research guinea pig. Just like Eileen Garrett was for yeah, many really, years. Yeah, really. I was a guinea pig. Like, yes. And it was very interesting, but I wasn't interested in ghost hunting, as the people, mm -hmm. the papers uh, described it. But I was interested in proving facts that the spirit was indestructible. And my ghost hunting exploits with and adventures with various parapsych parapsychologists really convinced me that the spirit is indestructible. And did you feel that you were picking up, uh, at times, distressed spirits? Or? Yes, and I think to release them was very, very good, because a spirit that is tormented will manifest itself in many ways, not with the clanking chains yes. and mm -hmm. so on, but particularly a mischievous one, a poltergeist. Yes. Uh, I've seen houses practically destroyed. Uh, there was a house in uh, the south of England uh, where the Bishop of Exeter went to exorcise the ghost. Tell you the truth, he wasn't so good, really and truly. I, he tried, yes. but you know, the church is a little funny on exorcism. They have it there, but they don't like to use it, because then if they're taking something away, they have to admit it's there. Right. Well, did he, was he See? able to exorcise the ghost? No, because after that I went. And what did you do? Well, we had a very interesting time, because this ghost had done tremendous damage in the house. And the house has been free for about six years now. And I think to release these troubled spirits is, is, is part of my life. Tell me now, your mother was involved in some area of, of psychic phenomena? Oh, my she? family. Your my two sons are far better mediums than I am. 
who were some of the people that you saw as a child in England or at your home that came to see your mother? Oh, we had the most, I had the most fantastic uh, childhood because we, I was born in England but spent a lot of the time in the south of France. And my father was a very scholarly gentleman and people like H.G. Wells would visit us. H.G. Wells. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And Lawrence of Arabia and the Sitwells. And I really didn't know anyone when I was a child unless they were famous. Mm. And it became a natural part became, of your everyday life. It became a part of my everyday life. Well, I don't know. I must say something. And, and, and there are times in a program, and maybe it's not too often, when you regret the time gone by. I know we've gone way over time. The only answer is to have Sybil back in the near future. Sybil, stay Christian, here. I want to teach you some card tricks. Oh, my God. We'll be back in just a moment with an interesting experience. You know, folks, first of all, Sybil's uh, information, her knowledge is, is extensive. And no matter how controversial it may be, it is something that we, I think we'd find interesting from a cultural and educational viewpoint. But I have here a very, very old book that Bill Luxton read from earlier on the physical phenomenon of spiritualism. It was written over the turn of this past century by Herod Carrington. Now, I don't particularly believe in spiritism. I respect the religion, though. There was something which we did on a program last year that's discussed in this old book. It was table tilting, where tables were made to wobble and move about the stage. I thought it would be interesting to take this one step far further. This is not spiritism with, that you're about to see, but I think it's going to be something you're going to long remember if ever you saw the program dealing with table tilting itself. Now, Bill, I'm going to ask you to take charge of the book, if you will. We have two lovely people up here from the audience. What's your name, ma'am? Lorraine and we have never met before. No. And what is your name? Gail. Are you married? Yes, I am. Are you married? Yes. Obviously, my sensitivity is batting just a little bit zero, but I have taste, I think, in, in people. The table that we're going to use is a fair size one. In fact, if both you girls will grab it, I think you'll feel it, find it fairly heavy. Grab it along the side. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Not dead weight, but it's fairly heavy. Now, we're going to have to make a chain. So would you put your hand on mine, please? Okay. Just place your hand on mine about like that. And not hard, I just touch my fingers about in that way. You place your hand over, touching the fingers to the table. I don't want you to press on the table. Now, place your left hand, uh, your right hand, I should say, here. And I will do the same thing. I will place, don't, just your fingertips, yes. just the fingers. And don't press, every finger must touch. And to make a chain, I will touch them like that. Now place your left hand, move a little bit, your left hand, if you will, in front of our hands. On the table, you'll have to come around. And now place your right hand on top. T just not on top of hers, but on the table, touching one of her fingers or more. Keep that chain. Now ladies, no matter what happens, stay with the table, but don't press down. Now my fingers, if you'll note in my right hand, my fingers aren't even touching right now, but I'll touch them every once in a while. My left hand, just slightly. I want you people, however, to to make sure you're in contact with my hands on the table or your other hands. Bill, would you read from the beginning of a chapter on table tilting, where it was not accepted as spiritism, but as a strange phenomenon? Start reading out loud, Bill. Probably no phenomena are more intimately connected in the, the public mind with the spiritistic Concentrating movement on the than those of table turning and table lifting. The reason for this is not, I think, hard to find. There can be no doubt that a large part of the phenomena, at least, are genuine, however we may choose to interpret them. I mean by this, that the table does, in very many cases, actually rise from off the floor. And whether the ultimate explanation be fraud, unconscious muscular action, electricity, spirits, or whatnot, a large share of the public's attention is inevitably bound to be directed toward phenomena that do actually occur, since the vast bulk of these table-turning experiments have been Stay conducted in private home circles where fraud was practically excluded to all appearances. You're not doing this deliberately, are you? No. My fingers are hardly... T Listen, it's not... I want you to think of it becoming lighter, but no matter what happens, do not break your chain. If you have to walk with the table, stay with it. Think of it becoming lighter, not just moving. Don't hardly touch it, but stay with it. Becoming lighter. I want you to think of it becoming lighter. My fingers are not hardly touching, but you, you keep your fingers to it. Becoming lighter. Lighter. Stay with it. Stay with it. 
Stay with it. Keep your head. Don't press. Don't press. Lift your head up. Stay with it. Watch the step, but don't break your chain. Don't break the chain. Stay with it. Stay with it. If, that, if it moves up, stay with it. Don't push down. Leave your hands higher. You're pushing down. Stay with it, if you will. Stay with it. Watch it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Don't break the chain. Stay with it, if you will. Stay. Keep your hands together. Stay. Whatever you do. It's going up higher. Stay. Higher. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay. As it rests, don't press. As it rests, stay with it. Stay with it. Now I ask the lady on my right just to move her right hand away. Her right, just her right hand. Take your right hand. Now take your left hand as I take my hand away. Now take your left hand away. Take your hand away. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. You got wild. No wiring. You can examine it. No hooks of any kind. And literally, it did rise, it raised. As a matter of fact, Ladies and gentlemen, if you're curious, for many years over the turn of the century, people asked tables questions and tables reacted. They got answers by the amount of raps. They believed that they were spirits. I think it was something else. But from the concept of talking to a table which bounced or moved or sometimes rose, we have a common term in our culture today of table talk, which is a part of everyday life. Thank you again and be the good Lord willing. I'll see you next week. Bye. Everybody. We've got an audience here that's tuned ahead of time. You know, I think about that, and I, I think, of, I, of course, you know I've never claimed to be a psychic or a soothsayer or anything else. Sometimes I jokingly say anybody can do what I do with uh, 20 years of practice and preparation. So, But that is a, that's not true either. That's misrepresentation any more than maybe a violinist or a pianist could say anybody could play the piano. We all have our predisposition in areas. It doesn't imply special gifts, just perhaps aptitudes. Now, that brings me to playing cards, and you know I love them. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is not a sleight of hand effect, but I think it will intrigue you. It's in the area of a, a kind of a mental test using cards. Let me have someone join me. Do you, sir, play cards at all? You do not play? You play cards at all, sir? Right there in the blue shirt, do you? Oh, yes. What kind of cards do you play? Uh, anything you want. Anything? <laughs> stand up, if you will, then, please. You stand up right by the table there. What is your name? Oh, Bernie Farber. Bernie, I'm going to, uh, <laughs> this is called breaking the seal on the deck without a nail file, as well as losing your nail at the same time. Maybe I'll ask you to, here we are. I'm taking a brand new deck of cards. Do you hold on to that for the time being? Thank you. You can hold on to the jokers. This actually is a straight mark deck of playing cards. <laughs> Bernie, have we ever met? Uh, no. Okay, Let no. me give the deck, not that you know of. No. <laughs> at least not in this life, I gather. Let me give the deck a bit of a shuffle, please. What I'm going to do is to ask you, we have the table here. I'm going to ask you to take a handful of cards, and the cards are mixed. Indeed, they, they certainly are all different in every way, shape, or form. What I'd like you to do, let me, let me shuffle them one more time. Someone might say in that flash to the camera that I've memorized the cards or done something else along that line. Take a handful of cards, 10 or 12, just a, take a whole bunch out of the deck if you'd like. Hold them towards you if you want. Hold them fan, in fact, very towards you, but keep the backs towards the camera. In this way, the marking should show up somewhat better. Actually, the cards are not marked, but you hold on to that. Just fan them. Don't even put them in sets. 
How many cards do you have in your hand, Bernie, please? Mm -hmm. Notice the speed with which he counts. <laughs> 17. Oh, 17. I, I really I hope we go in the air. To, well, we can go over time and block out all the commercials. <laughs> if I name a card that's in your hand, take it out. As a matter of fact, is that in your hand a king of spades, yes or no? Um, yes, it is. Is it in the left of your hand? Yes. Take it out. First card? Yes. Drop it on the table, face up. Just drop it down on the oh, table, face up. up. Uh, now, if you will, right next to that, I don't want anyone to think I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, is that a, is that another, ki is that an, a jack in your hand? Next to the king? Yeah, is the next card in your hand a jack? No. Nope. Well, for my next miracle. <laughs> eight of diamonds? Yes. Take out the eight of diamonds, please. Is that a six of clubs? <laughs> You're stuck. <starting. laughs> you got to tell me the answer to that, please. What do you think, I'm a mind reader? Oh, yes. <laughs> do I see a king, king of diamonds in your hand? Yes, it Take it out? It certainly is. Do you have another king in your hand next to it? Uh, no, I don't. Well, then I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not, unless that's a five of spades. That's what it is. That, is, right. that is a card. Uh, do I see in your hand, is that a picture card that's next of all? Yes. Queen of diamonds? Yes. Drop it down very, very quickly, please. Is that, do I see in your hand, I'm having nine of hearts? Uh, no. No, it is not, an, would, it be, would I invert it and be correct? Inverted? Is it a four? Yes. Four of hearts? Uh, no. I can't get it, what is it please? Four of diamonds. That was the next card in your hand. Yeah. You know what's happening, don't, don't shift your eyes ahead because I keep getting a card that maybe is beyond in your hand. Is that a three in your hand, sir? Uh, no. I do not see a three. Well, obviously, folks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here because uh, I can't, I'd only be guessing Unless it's a six of hearts in your hand. That's exactly You do have a six is. of hearts in your hand. Try to concentrate or picture the next card in your hand. Uh, I can't, would that be, is that a, another queen? Yes. I knew there was a queen, a queen of spades. That's right. Take it out, please, if you will. Is that a seven in your hand? Uh, there is, but not next to it. It's not next to it. I can't get the card then. And I think, folks, it's, it's difficult enough uh, as it is, unless that's another queen. That's what uh, it there's is. There's two more. Another queen of clubs. That's right. <laughs> All right. Do I see in your hand a ten? You do. Ten of diamonds. Correct. Do I see in your hand a... Is that a five? That's right. Five of diamonds? Correct. How many cards left? Uh, three, six. Six of clubs? Uh, no. No. Uh, you know, folks, I know a lot of people think that perhaps in some way... I can't get that next card. What is it, sir? Six of spades. Gosh, I'm sorry. Take it out of your hand, put it down. Uh, in poker, I'd be doing well up to now anyway. <laughs> King of clubs? Correct. Two of diamonds? Correct. Is that in your hand a seven? Yes. Seven of hearts? Correct. Two of spades? Right. How many cards left? One left. Oh, I'd love to hit that card. <laughs> it is a black... Uh, is it a red card? No. And it is a black one. <laughs> An eight? Yes. Eight of clubs? Correct. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me show you something that is unabashedly an area of pure digital thaumatogy. In other words, sleight of hand. We'll be back in a moment. I wonder, during the break, I asked if there were a couple of people who would join me uh, in a little bit of card work. And the man over here said he played poker, right, sir? Would you kind of come up here for, and the, who's the gentleman over here? There's a hand that went up. Come over from the aisle and come right down the steps. Sit in this chair here, if you will, and I'll ask this gentleman to be seated right over here. If you don't mind my sitting ahead of you to save some time, we're using the same deck of cards that I employed in my last effect the cards really, let there be no question of, oh, let's take the jokers out because it would only invalidate the, ex what kind of poker do you play, sir? Any, whoop, we got the cards over, any kind of poker? Any kind. Did you play for money yeah. ever, sir? Uh, what's you want? Had a bad time of it last time, didn't you? <laughs> All right. Why don't you shuffle the cards, please, sir? By the way, what is your name, sir? Richard. Richard, last name? Dallaire. Dallaire. And 52, 52 cards. There better be 52 <laughs> cards. You add live one more time and I'll change you to a rabbit. <laughs> now, in Vegas or Reno, Monte Carlo, wherever cards are played or wherever there's gambling, gentlemen, we know 
that there's a ceremony before the dealing of the hand, the cutting of the dick. People would prize it if they could control the cut in some way. I'm just going to nonchalantly cut the cards, if I may, and by chance we've cut to an ace, which I always think is rather intriguing. Now, of course, it could be luck, because obviously there are 52 cards and there are four aces in the deck, please. Let me cut one more time. Another ace. You shuffle these cards beautifully, I must tell you. Now try it one more time. Just, by the way, it is a straight deck of cards. There are no duplicates. And I, I cut one more. I think I missed it. No, I didn't. The ace. And by the way, you can shuffle them to save time. Just give it an overhand shuffle real fast. And let me show you. Let me show you how this is done. That was done very well, by the way. <laughs> shuffle them one more time, please. Talk about miracles passing all over the place. What I never pointed out to anyone is when I riffle the cards like this, I look for position. Now, I just, in riffling, and there are six card men in the world who can do this. There may be others, I'm just not aware of it. I look for the position of a card, and that's why I took off the 28 cards, the final ace. So I think with something like that, thank you. Tell you what I'd like to do. We don't, I wanted to tell an anecdote. I don't just know how the time is going, how much we have left. But I'm going to place the aces on the top of the deck, and we just don't have that much time. Let me ask you, uh, the gentleman right here, if we were to play poker, let's use four people instead. Four hands are more interesting. You, and you, and myself. And our viewers will be the final person. Who would you like to get the best hand? Mm. Myself. Who would you like to of all the people? <laughs> Yourself. All right, let me shuffle these in this way. I'm going to try to stack the deck. I may have missed. You are the, obviously, the third person. We'll give the deck, if we will, and I didn't plan to do this, but a multiple cut, and we will deal all the cards from the top. In fact, let's limit it to the four. One, two, yourself you wanted? Sure. Three, four. You're dealing a four-handed game of poker. Three, four. And they're all from the top. One, two, three, four. This would make it perfect. One, two, and there you are. So nice, so nice. Thank you. We'll be back for some questions in a little while. Thank you. During the break, which was uh, unusually brief for its length, I, uh, I asked for some questions that we could share on camera. The person right over here had a question. Could we ask that gentleman? Just repeat it again. Stand up, if you will, please, sir. What, what? is your name? Don Menton. Don, what's the question you want Well, to I could see you being a mentalist, finding right. the four aces the first time. How could you control when you, uh, you just set them out on the table? Well, what I did was, of course, I put them on the top. I cut them. Actually, when I cut the cards, I cut them 32, 3, 4, and 5 down from the top. I have a, a good sense of touch, and I was able to stack the deck in two and a half seconds. I can do that in a darkened room. It's, it's controlling the fall of the cards. Yes, the gentleman up there has a question. And aren't, he's the one who had one also regarding gambling. I've got to have you repeat that. What's your name, sir? Ilio Pochetti. Yes, Mr. Pochetti. Is that uh, Polish? No, Italian. Italian? <laughs> do you know I'm half Polish and half Italian, so we're, we're safe. <laughs> What's the question, sir? Could you ever make a killing in Monte Carlo on the cards? <laughs> On the, on the, in the cards. Okay. Well, at, uh, at, I had a problem once at Reno because I can case a deck. The only way to win at blackjack is to memorize every card that goes out. And when they play with four decks, you must memorize every card. And I can memorize them by just flashing my eyes over them. You know what cards are left. But they don't like people to do that. <laughs> my picture is in one of the hotel offices in Reno, in, in Vegas, so that I would not be allowed to play at any table there. It can be done. The lady over here has... You've got to ask me what you started asking me. So that, what's your name, madam? Dorothy Marshall. Dorothy, what's your question? When can I have my first lesson? <laughs> your first, in what? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, will carry some of the mysteries with me to my grave, but uh, we might negotiate later on, Dorothy. 
There was one more question. The gentleman over here, I think, had something very provocative. Where, uh, lady right over here. Yes, I see the lady here. He asked a question and I answered it during the break. What's, what's your name? Linda Deans. Linda, what's your question? Have you ever used your talent to help the police? Yes, have I used my talent to help the police, but not in the way that so-called psychics do when they have an object found at the scene of the crime and all of this. It happened in one FBI case that a lady had been at the scene of the crime, but because of apprehension and the trauma of the experience, she saw the men leave the bank and go into the car, but she could not remember the license plate number. Now, had she never seen it, no psychic, I'm convinced, would have been able, been able to get it. But I had her visualize on the wall a movie screen. It took a while. She wasn't hypnotized. We were exercising our imagination. And gradually, we backed. She saw the car, but she couldn't picture the numbers on the car, the license. So I said, have you ever heard of a reversal in the film? She said, well, yes, I saw it in comedies. We backed up the picture. She was just imagining. And I, I tell you, the car got close enough in her imagination that she read off the numbers, and this helped break the case. So it was a technique. Now when I come back, without hypnotizing a living soul or putting them in a trance. I'm going to demonstrate how powerful suggestion really is. Join me. I talked to these people before the program, and I did some tests with them just to test their response. We, we had so many people, I had to kind of narrow down the group. But before I go to my group behind me, I must explain something very, very strongly. In fact, I was going to do this during the question and answer, but it, it really slipped my mind. Seven years ago, I started to weigh all the information regarding hypnosis. And it always amazed me that some people through the history of hypnotism used to say, you, some of them would say, a few here and there, Anything you can do with a person hypnotized, you can do without hypnotizing them. Now, nobody ever pays attention to this because most hypnotists are deluded into thinking they've got a trance. So I started to experiment. I didn't hypnotize anybody. For 19 years, I used to hypnotize people. I've got to tell you something. It shocked me, it stunned me, but I found as the days went by that everything I had ever done, when I hypnotized someone, I was able to do without hypnotizing them. The facts of life are, folks, that all of us can do a lot more things than we believe. So when I put Johnny Carson months ago between two chairs with his head on one, his feet on the other, nothing into the middle of him, he was not in a trance, in no way. And yet someone sat in the middle and it was no trickery. He just didn't realize he could set his muscles in that manner. Now, there's suggestion. People can respond to ideas. But I say one more thing, because these people are not going to be hypnotized. Give a person who's hypnotized a battery of physiological tests, even the EEG, which is the electroencephalogram, and test your brainwave patterns. The patterns of a person hypnotized are the patterns of you and I right now, as we are perfectly awake. So even those people are not in a trance, they think they are. So without any hypnosis, let's just demonstrate how powerful an idea is, just as I did on the Carson Show, but with a little more detail. Folks, uh, it's nice to have you here. Kind of interesting experience so far? Yes, it is. Fascinating. Now, this is kind of remarkable because it shows the ability of mental control. All of you hold your arm, arms in front of you about like this. <laughs> and start, if you will, this is going to almost get out of hand. Start rotating your arms, please. Rolling your arms like that. I'm going to ask the men to place their feet flat on the any men. Please be flat on the gals not. If a man's legs are crossed, it usually shows resistance in, in demonstrations like this. Now, rotate your hand faster, faster. Now, don't look at me, look at your hands. Let them go faster, even faster, even faster. Indeed, when I snap my fingers three times, your hands will go totally out of control, which obviously they're going already, and you can't stop your hands, no matter how much you try. One, they're going faster, faster, totally out of control. Two, you can't stop them. At three, that's impossible to stop them. Three, you can't stop your arms, they go faster. Try, they're going much, much faster, out of control, faster. Try, they're going faster, faster, you can't stop them. Try, and when I say stop, they'll suddenly freeze in front of you. The moment I say stop, he's going out of, out of orbit. Stop! Notice how they're frozen, frozen in position. You can't bend your arm. They're locked in position. All she can do is move her fingers. She ca you can't bend your arm. Try. They will not budge ahead in any way, shape, or form. You can't. You can't in any way, shape, or form. You can't bend your arm no matter how you try. Try with. They can't. And yet when I say go, they'll spin again faster. Go. They're spinning out of control. Faster. They suddenly take off. In fact, the third snap, they're out of control again. It's the most wildest. We may have difficulty in releasing their hands, but it will gradually wear off. And now your hands will slow down. If there's any problem, I'll come to you directly. But they will 
they're going to stop. So they're going to stop. Stop. And that while, give them a hand. They really deserve it. Why? Now I have kind of a priceless. Oh, I don't know where the time is. We've got to do this again in another program. All of you hold your hands palm upwards like this, your left hand. Left hand. Now, if you will, picture a circle in the palm of your hand. This is actually the use of your imagination. And practically any human being alive can do this, believe me. Picture a circle. As soon as you're picturing a circle, signal me by placing your right hand at the side of your face. Just picture a circle. It's a very easy thing to do. Good. We've got the circle already. Picture it clear, clear, clear. There it is. It's clear as day. Just picture that circle. As soon as you have it, put your right hand to your face. Now, that circle is going to change. And it's going to come to life. And what you see will remain alive until I release it later on. It's starting to come to life now. As soon as it comes to life or becomes an object or a thing or an animal, you'll put your hand down and play with it or stroke it or whatever it may be. As I count to seven, it becomes very real. One, it's becoming very real now. Two, your hand comes here. There, it's coming in. We've got, got it already. Three, four, I don't even have to talk anymore. Take your hand away from your face as soon as you have it and start petting it or stroking it or using it with your hand. Four, five, there it is clear. It's coming already. Five, six, start to use your hand up. It's becoming very real, very, very clear. Six, seven, it's as clear as they're there. We've, we've, we've all got something and it's becoming very real. Tell me what you have there, sir. What is that, sir? Well, it looked like a drumstick before. It looks like a swan now. It's becoming a swan. Yeah. It's becoming bigger and starting to move. It may move up your arm, play with it as it does. What do you have there, miss? Oh, it's got legs. I it's got legs. <laughs> It's getting like, more real. It's getting more. What does it look like? Well, kind of like a spider. A spider. <laughs> you go into the violent area, I can tell momentarily. What do you have there, please, sir? Oh, uh, it's a 50 cent piece now. 50 cent. <laughs> oh, it's becoming very real. It's becoming very real. <laughs> what, you're very real. What do you have there, please, miss? Canary. A canary? Canary, watch it start to go up your arm. You better just play. It's, play it. it's going on your shoulder. There. It's on his shoulder. It's going on your shoulder. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Bring it over here. Bring it on your hand. What do you have there, sir? Blue jay. A blue jay. Isn't that the cutest thing? You have a, a quarter there. Why don't you hold it up so that we can see it? Uh, oh, you drop it, sir. Just pick it up. There it is. Down there. Go get it. It's on the floor. There we are. Pick it up so that we can all see it. What's the date on it? It becomes very clear. 62. Isn't that something? It's 62. How's your canary, please? It's here. How's our, we, we'll hold on to these. But by the way, if you want to know how real these are, watch their faces. Because when I snap my fingers, the quarters, the birds, the spiders will disappear and you'll be stunned. You'll try to figure out where they went. At the stop of my fingers, they will be gone. Watch their faces. It's an incredible thing to see how real these are. They're gone. What's the matter, sir? I lost my 50 cent piece. <laughs> you, you lost? What's the matter, sir? It flew away. <laughs> sir, what's the matter? My blue jay's gone. <laughs> your, blue, your blue jay's gone. Hey, you get it. Wait, we got to get this bird before we leave tonight. Be careful that they won't fly off. Be careful that they won't fly off. It's very real. Very real. Now, be careful that you don't hurt the bird. Be careful. Don't, don't move. Don't move, he's saying. Oh, tremendous. Bring it down, sir. Bring it down here. That's it. Bring it down and show it to us. Isn't that fascinating? All the way down. I'm so glad you were able to find it, sir. Hurry on down here. I certainly hope this doesn't happen later on tonight. But come on forward, please, if you will. Yeah, what, kind of, what would you call it? It's a swan. It's a swan. I never heard of a flying swan in my life. I got to release him. When I snap my fingers, it'll be gone. He'll wonder where it is. It'll have disappeared instantly. Now, he doesn't, he's not quite thinking that much about it now, but he's aware of this. Watch his surprise. It's gone. What's the matter? Well, it seemed like it just went out and ran the other side of hand. But you're there anymore. <laughs> thank you very much, and I thank all of you. They're all done. Quarter's done. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say this in conclusion. To the day I die, if anyone thinks these people were hypnotized, they were not either now or before the show. But to the day I die, and this is legally set up, it has been put in print, and now it is recorded for television. I offer $20,000, so deeply do I believe this, $20,000 to anybody who can plead, prove or show evidence of a specific hypnotic trance or condition. I am convinced there is no such thing. But suggestion, my God, that is powerful. Thanks again. Be the good Lord willing. I'll see you next week. <laughs>